Okay, so let's go over the case of the week for this week, and I want to present a case that was actually completed by Dr. Anna Maria Mirsan. She is one of our in-house dentists, and she's also a certified dental technician, so uh, an extremely talented individual. And this uh, case, uh, this patient presented for uh, the need to have uh, four anterior crowns uh, replaced, uh, 7 through 10. So Dr. Mirsan, after getting the patient numb, uh, went ahead and removed the old crowns. And now she's prepping the margins and uh, making sure that uh, any recurrent decay is uh, cleaned up from around the margins of these teeth. Obviously, uh, you want to go through and make sure that you clean everything up after removal of the old crowns. Uh, and certainly there was some leakage around these. Uh, where they had to need to be removed. Uh, this technique in terms of the uh, crown preparation is the reverse technique. I like it because it gives you a set of uh, burrs to go through in order to get a final prep. Uh, it gives you certain guidelines so it's very helpful. Clinicians uh, have their own technique and obviously if you're comfortable with the way you're prepping teeth uh, and you're doing it right, that's uh, based on your comfort level. So uh, again, the reverse prep technique works uh, quite well and uh, we like it because it's a standardized way of prepping the teeth. So um, once the teeth are prepared, the laboratory actually has fabricated a tooth prep guide that you can seat on top of the preps to make sure that you have enough reduction. Now for the topic of our discussion, uh, we're talking about Bruxer anterior and because it's a Bruxer, we can have uh, minimal reduction in order to fabricate these crowns. Uh, you want to go ahead and check the bite and like I said before, the reduction guide is seated on top of the teeth to make sure that you do have enough reduction. Uh, one little trick is that you can always place a, a hole through you know, the different areas of the reduction guide and using your periodontal probe you can check to see how much reduction you have through the uh, actual uh, reduction guide. So uh, once we know we have enough uh, reduction, we can go ahead and reline our biotemps and uh, the patient can actually go home uh, with a set of temporaries. Uh, when the patient comes back to have the final impression visit, if you don't do it at the same day of the prep, the biotemps are removed. Uh, what I like to use and what Dr. Mirsan used in this uh, video is a uh, ultrasonic to get rid of the temporary cement. Uh, it's very helpful so you don't have to scrape away at the temporary cement. And then the uh, two core technique is utilized so that uh, we can go ahead and capture the margins. So uh, once the uh, first cord is placed, we'll go ahead and uh, refine our margins and make sure that uh, we have nice, clean, visible margins. And then the second cord is placed along with uh, some cotton rolls or, or copper caps I really like using these compre caps because the, the pressure on the tissue uh, helps the retraction and also helps with the hemostasis around those teeth. So uh, after a period of uh, three to four minutes, we can go ahead and remove uh, that second cord that was placed and inject the light body and the, and the medium body, or actually in this scenario, this is uh, medium body capture material along with uh, heavy body capture impression material. So once the impression material is set, uh, we can go ahead and remove the uh, impression tray from the patient's mouth and we can visualize the, uh, the margins that are captured uh, within the impression. And utilizing a triple tray, uh, I believe this is a clinician's choice uh, triple tray and I like these because they're uh, very rigid you can go ahead and capture the area where you want to uh, impress. Uh, one important aspect of the Bruxer anterior is that there is uh, a bit of translucency in this restoration and it's very important to capture the stump shade and uh, relay that information to the dental technician so that they know what they're working with underneath the, the final restoration. So once the stump shade is selected, the information is sent to the laboratory and the technician can uh, design and produce a Bruxer anterior uh, restoration. And as you can see here, they are uh, very well integrated uh, into the patient's mouth. So I'm very uh, excited about this product. Uh, it's, a, it's a very good product and it brings a little more translucency to the original Bruxer line of restorations. And I hope that you get a chance to use it in the near future.